All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. So we are going to talk about some things, okay? We're going to talk about this Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards matchup. We're going to talk about the welterweight division in general. And I also want to talk about the Kamara Usman video that he just put out with the foot stomps because it says more than you think it does, okay? It says a lot. Also, I'm going to demonstrate that with this uh, Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz fight, I am thinking about things the same way that the UFC is. And it proves it. This fight proves it, okay? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, how this, just the welterweight division in general and how it could shake out because there's so much going on there now. Like there's so much going on at welterweight. But if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. This is a unique MMA channel. And I want you to know that because... This might be your first time coming here. Unlikely with a video about this. Like most likely it'll be most of my like, you know, normal viewers, but we're getting close to 10K. You know what that means? It means that I'm going to hit my goal, which was 10K inside of a year. We've got, a, you know, I don't know, three, three weeks to hit it, which we will. So what's up? Maybe we could fast forward it if you guys share it a little bit. I know all of you guys have probably already shared my shit a million times, but maybe again. So anyway, here we go. So I want to start. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards fight for 100% sure. That is that is the kind of primary topic here and the welterweight division in general. But what I, what I want to start with, I want to start with the video that Kamaru Usman put out of him uh, shadow boxing and pretending to foot stomp people. Okay, if you guys haven't seen that, I would link, I'm going to say I'll link this in the video or not link it, but I'll, you know, cut it and put it in the video. 99% I'm going to forget. So just go find it. Just go find Kamaru Usman foot stomp or whatever. He's doing, he put out a video where he's training and he's like, you know, and he's, and then he's foot stomping, right? He's, you know, he's leaning into it. I love that, okay? I love when guys lean into things that people have been giving them shit for online, right? It's like Aljamain Sterling, you ain't the real champ. You ain't the real champ. And so now he's just carrying the belt around like, oh, what's up? And he's leaning into it. That's smart, okay? That's fight game. That is fight game. Number one, it's giving the finger to people who are talking shit online. Number two, okay? Number two, it's funny, right? It's funny. It shows you don't care. And also it's getting eyeballs. That's the kind of thing that gets shared around. Any kind of content you can create that's gonna get shared is good content, okay? Kamaru Usman shadow boxing and doing intentional foot, pretending he's foot stomping someone, that's gonna get shared. That got shared with me twice, okay? So it's good content. That is good fight game. That is a good champion being smart, promoting himself, right? Anything that gets shared is good content. However, there's another part of that that I wanna just point out, okay? so. Everyone, you know, was, oh, what are you going to do? Going to foot stomp him to death? Going to foot stomp him? So I've never, you've never heard me say that, right? I, I could guarantee you if you go back, you're not going to find me running my mouth about foot stomps. Like, oh, wow, well, oh, what's he going to do? Just foot stomp him? That's because I understand the fight game, okay? So what are you actually doing in there? What What is the point of, of getting into the octagon and and having a martial arts match, Right? You're trying to damage the other person's body, okay? Like seriously, I realize there's it's a beautiful motion, you know, and it's like, wow, look at Sean O'Malley. He's like, he's like water flowing. I agree, okay? But that doesn't have anything to do with what the actual point of the event is. What's the sport? What are you doing in there? Like, what is the sport? What are you trying to accomplish and how do you win? Okay? This is simple, okay? You are two cars in a in a crash test, like in a in a you know in a whatever that's called, like a you know demolition derby. You're in a you're in a demolition derby with the other guy's body. Okay, that is what this is. That is what the sport is. That's why when I sit down and watch this every once in a while, you know, I mean, listen, like if there's an event on, no matter where I am, I'm watching it. Period. And if I happen to be at someone's house who doesn't watch UFC normally, they're just gonna have to suck it up, and I'm gonna give them sixty bucks and I'm gonna put the fucking fight on because that. And I've done that many times as a matter of fact i should do a video on this okay i'll do a separate video on this the first time i met my wife's mom 100 true story i will bring her here and do i had never met her it was like hey this is my new boyfriend jesse oh hi how are you so there's this event on tonight i gave her you want to know how old this is i gave her 60 bucks and i ordered a pay-per-view on her tv the first night that i met her and it was gsp versus matt sarah the one where matt sarah knocked gsp out so Believe me, like I don't miss events. And if you end up, or if I end up at someone's house who happens to be like a medical professional and they end up watching UFC and they're not used to watching it, every time they say the same thing, every time, they go, I, don't, I can't even believe this is legal. That's what they say, every time. And multiple times I've heard that. I, I can't even believe this is legal. You know, they're not being pricks. They're just like, they can't even make their brain understand what they're looking at. They're like, dude, look at the damage these guys are doing to each other. How is this even legal? So, 
It's a human demolition derby. That is what it is. People go and they train themselves to be finely tuned instruments of destruction so that they can go demolish the other guy's vehicle, which is their body, okay? So, do you need your feet to move around the octagon? I mean, do you need your feet? Probably. Do you need your feet to do every single thing that you are gonna wanna do? Do you need your foot to be able to plant to throw a cross? You know, how about throw a jab? Do you need to be able to step heavy on your on your front foot if you wanna move forward quickly? Like, do you need your feet to be able to do everything, to be able to move, okay? So someone stomping on your feet, when the point is to damage the person's body and slow them down, that's not a good, that's not a good move. Like that's, that's not something that, that people should probably implement when they're in the clinch. I, I don't understand that at all. The, 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 think about, you ever heard Joe Rogan talk about finger, like hands, where he's like, it's ridiculous that we punch with hands as opposed to elbows, like that hands, these, this is for piano. He's like, this is for piano. Look at these little bones. The foot is the same, tiny little bones, right? Now, how does a heel feel though, right? You stomp a heel on the tiny little finger bones that are, it, you know, your toe bones, okay? Like, it's a good strategy. It's a good attack. If you can break a guy's toe, that matters in the fight. That matters. Now, I understand, like, in the, in the you know, Masvidal fight, people were saying, oh, that's all he did. I don't necessarily agree with that. But, like, a foot stomp is a good move. Period. Now, he's obviously not going to foot stomp the way he was doing it in the video, right? Like a step forward foot stomp. Obviously, you do it in the clinch. But the people running their mouth about the foot stomp don't understand what the point of this sport is. Damage the other guy's car, okay? Feet, part of the car. So, anyway, that's that. Now, let's talk about Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz. Because what this says, what have I been saying about Leon Edwards forever, right? Forever. I've been saying that the Kumza Shemaya fight, the reason it makes so much sense is because Leon Edwards... Is, has all the talent, has all the skills, and he has no hype. Hamza Shemaev has all the hype. So you put that together, and what happens? One of them is going to be a top five fighter with hype, okay? Because this guy doesn't have the rank, this guy has the rank, this guy doesn't have the hype, this guy has the hype. So whoever comes out of that fight, you take from the other person whatever they have. You go into the octagon with what you have, and you walk out with what both of you guys had if you win, okay? That's, you... you there is always a massive wager. You accept a fight. What you're accepting is to put up what you have against what they have, and you go in and you fight for it. That is the fight game, okay? That is that is what's happening in every single fight. Now, in a lot of cases, both guys are unranked. Neither of them have hype. And so what you're, what you're fighting for is the ability to then fight another guy who has a little bit more than you, right? You win this fight, you get to go for someone a little bit more until you keep winning and then you get to a place where someone has something meaningful that you can take from them. That is the fight game, okay? Now, the way that you can build hype outside the octagon is by doing crazy shit online, right? Doing crazy shit online or, or anything to like, boom, get steam. And you don't know what it's gonna be. If you're a, I mean, I'll use Eric Nixick as an example, okay? If you're a head down, if you're a head down, you know, do your job, do the right things, say the right things about people. Don't, don't, there's no like smoke and bullshit. Like that's, that's not his style. He's going in there to train fighters. He's going to do the interviews. He's going to talk well about other fighters. He's not going to talk shit about anybody. He's just going to do what's right. His boom moment is going to be when his guy wins the heavyweight title. Okay. He wins, he wins coach of the year last year. Still, you know, people know him. Then his guy wins heavyweight championship and everyone starts saying his name. Boom. That's his moment. Now, boom. He's in the upper echelons in terms, I mean, he was already in the upper echelons of coaches, but now he's got the hype, right? Now he's a hype guy. And as a coach, that matters, dude. That shit matters because it makes other fighters potentially want to come train with you. And like, may, like man, look what he did for Francis. Look what he did for Ige. Maybe I could, maybe I could Bennett or and Aljamain Sterling. Like, maybe I could go. The guy won two, the guy won two championships in a month. Maybe there's something I can learn from that, right? That's, that's why the fight, like the hype, and then also sponsorships and all that stuff. But so like, you just don't know what it's gonna be that's gonna blow you up. As a fighter, if you got the guts, you know, if, you, if you're kind of wired to be nuts, like Henry Cejudo, you can build it yourself and just be crazy. I mean, obviously Henry Cejudo is also a fucking awesome fighter. I mean, he was, already, he was already fighting for the belt before he even, he actually already won the belt at 125 before he even started that shit. He started that stuff when he was fighting against TJ. The point I'm making, okay, is you can either take it from a guy and there are some ways that you can build it up yourself. And so, 
this fight, Leon Edwards, I mean, you watch his interviews. This is not a guy who's going to go hype himself, right? He's going to have incredible skills. He's going to have incredible skills. I've talked about this, right? I have made suggestions. Obviously, I don't think Leon's seen them, but I made absurd suggestions of how he could build hype. He's not going to do it. I, I mean, again, I'm not saying that he's seen my videos, but it's just not, he's not that kind of guy. He's going to relax. He's going to go to the gym. He's, I mean, not relax, but he's going to train and he's going to fight. He's going to train. He's going to fight. He's going to train. He's going to fight. He's never going to be a guy that's in interviews and people feel super drawn to his like on-screen magnetism. That's just not his thing, right? So how is he going to get hype? He needs to take it from someone. He has to do it the other way. That And the UFC knows that, okay? Dustin Poirier, similar. He's got, I mean... Dustin Poirier actually is a lot more charismatic than people give him credit for. When he was on Joe Rogan, I was like, damn, this is a guy. He's a star, man. He just, anyway, it's neither here nor there. I'm gonna, I don't want to tangent too hard. But you look at, you know, you look at this and it's like, he is one ingredient away from being huge. And that is taking hype from someone. So they put him against Nate Diaz because Hamza Shemaya, that's why they kept trying to make that Hamza Shemaya fight because one of them comes out a superstar. And so now you got Nate Diaz. If Nate Diaz can be a top five guy, Nate Diaz is already a massive draw. And you get him up in the mix. I mean, do I think that he could beat Kamaru Usman? No. You know, I mean, we already know what happened with Masvidal. I don't see why it would be any different against like Colby or anyone. I mean, like Nate is, a, I mean, the, any of these guys in the top four, top five are terrible matchups for Nate. Terrible matchups. As a matter of fact, I can just say real quick, kind of breaking down that Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards fight. So what what Masvidal did in that fight was he showed this is the game plan that beats Nate Diaz, right? This is the game plan that beats Nate Diaz. And that was, you know, straight punches, body kicks, stay out of range. And when you clinch, explode out an elbow, right? When any time that they were in the clinch, he, ex he exploded out and elbowed on his way out. And it worked every time, right? Straight surgical punches, kicks to the body, when you clinch, explode out of it. That's it. That's all he did. And he did it over and over and over and it worked every single time. Okay, so look, Leon Edwards has great kicks. He's got great straight punches. That guy, that guy, boom, just absolutely dead straight. He gives no give. Of, of any fighter that I've seen, I can't think of anybody who telegraphs his punches less. Maybe Camaro now. Maybe Kamaru Usman is he, you know, right around the same, but there is no telegraph, absolutely none with Leon. He's especially his cross, man. His cross is just comes at, wait, well, <laughs> this is gonna be mirrored. So I'll do it with my right hand and it'll look like it's my left to you guys. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very tough matchup for, for Nate Diaz. I mean, how does Nate Diaz beat people, right? Like he's a, he is a human wrecking ball that just, uh, wait, wait, no, that's the wrong, he's not a human wrecking ball. He can take human wrecking ball and just keep coming. Like the demolition derby thing, he is unbreakable, right? Like that's, you know, you use the, the demolition derby thing. It's like boom, 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 boom. And eventually one of the cars is like, man, I'm almost out of gas. And he's like, and it's like, how is this car still running? And he's like, oh, I'm just getting started, bro. I'm just getting started. My car's slow as fuck. You know, my car, it's, you know, doesn't even really hit real hard, but guess what? How does it do against what your car looks like in the fifth round, you know? Like in the first round, it's slow. It doesn't really hit that hard, you know, whatever. But let's compare it to how most other fighters' cars look in like the fourth and fifth round. How's it looking now? And all of a sudden it's like, fuck, that thing is pretty fast compared to me in the fourth round. It hits real hard when I'm down to the last wire in the fourth and fifth round. But Leon Edwards, I've never seen him tired. Have you ever seen him tired? Go watch the RDA fight. Five rounds. Does he ever look tired? I mean, it's, I mean, you know. And and if you thought if you thought that like Nate was going to be able to get him trapped in in the clinch and tire him out, Nate Diaz, uh, or I'm sorry, Jorge Masvidal showed how to get out of the clinch and and not get into that game with him. Right. So it's a very tough matchup. I, I can't really think of how how Nate would win. It doesn't mean he can't win, but it's a tough matchup. And then you've got the rest of the. I mean, it should have been Colby. Like it should have, it should have been Colby versus Leon, and the winner fights fights the winner, right? I mean, you, you literally have. I mean, I would imagine they had to have offered Colby that fight because you've got Masvidal and Usman in the event right before that, so it would make sense to have this be a number one contender fight. Uh, I, I I would imagine that Colby thinks he's in line for a shot without having to fight again, and so he's probably just sitting it out. That would be my guess. And he's probably right, if you really think about it. Like, he might not need to fight again. These guys are about to fight. 
Who are you going to put in there? So let's say let's say Leon Edwards beats Nate Diaz. Is he going to get the fight over Colby? No. Everyone wants to see that rematch. Everyone wants to see that rematch. Which is pretty unfortunate when you think about it for Leon. Like so so Usman's going to fight Mossadal twice and Colby twice before he fights Leon and get a fight. I mean, he's got a rough go. But he's uh he's a great fighter and he's going to get a lot of hype if he beats Nate Diaz. So anyway, that's what I got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Congratulations Eric Nixick. Congratulations to everybody who's winning and doing the right things. Love you guys. Peace.